adorable. So cute. We have one minute. We have to wait till 9.15 for the people at home. It's 9.15. Oh, really? I not, oh, it's 9.15. Wave to all the people at home. Wave. Hi, everybody at home. Um, I am, if you are at home, I'm, I want to tell you, you're going to need, if you're going to join in on what we're doing here, you'll need paper and pencil um, later on into the message. First, just a couple of messages. So we want you, yes, we want you Tuesdays and Thursday nights. It means a lot because we want to really make sure that we're a community. And we want you to know that we are here for you and you're here for each other. And, and it's not ideal, but it's a great way to stay connected. Tuesday night is girls and guys. Thursday night is co-ed. So we have a whole bunch of different stuff. Girls, we have a message. Now, this Thursday, we're doing a little something special with the co-ed. We are doing an escape the room, North Pole. For those of you who did the last one with me, it's a lot of fun. It's just like escape the room when you go to the place, except obviously it's virtual. We come, we form groups. I send you out into your own breakout room and whoever, see who can escape the North Pole first. I will give you a heads up, not an easy one. Um, so I need leaders. So leaders who's listening and leaders who are here, um, I'm going to need, I'll send you the answers because it's tough. So that's all my announcements. Two announcements. Easy. Now we have a special band that's going to play some music for us. Oh yeah. So um, actually I'm going to say a quick prayer and then we'll have the band come up. Dear Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for this opportunity that we can join together as a community, as the church. You know everything that we're going through. I lift up all these kids, put them in your hands, and I just hope we can open our hearts, open our souls to the message that's going to be given today. And we just pray that the songs and the words are pleasing to your heart. I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, band, come on up. Hey guys, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm going to start with an older one, Dry Bones. Come on. If you guys can remember. If you'll stand and join us for worship.
nice to have live music. I don't think I need that microphone though. Um, thank you. Band again. Let me just get rid of Kimmy's binder. Sorry about my notes up. All right. So again, for those of you who might have joined us late in TV land or YouTube land or live stream land, I don't know what to call it. Um, if you want to do some of the stuff we're doing here, you need paper and pencil. And I'm going to be asking some questions. Feel free to, I don't know why I'm talking to you guys. Feel free to text me if you want to interact and answer some of the questions. So last week, uh, Sean started a new series and he talked about setting goals or making a plan. Um, and he mentioned that it's a good idea to make a plan um, to help us grow, to help us keep learning. Um, just an FYI, you're not going to need that for a while. So you can hold it if you want, but I'll let you know when you need it. <laughs> Don't take notes because I'm going to ask you to do something later. Um, so for me, that means Stop being um, satisfied with the status quo. Stop doing the middle of the road, not learning, not growing, just kind of being satisfied. There is a great quote by C.S. Lewis, and I'm paraphrasing it. It's not the exact quote, but you'll get the gist of the meaning. Um, it says, kids are often comfortable and happy settling for playing in the mud puddles, not realizing the immensity and the beauty of the ocean that is just a couple feet away. So it's so common for us to be comfortable in our mud puddle, so to speak, and just be comfortable where we are and not want to learn and not want to grow because that means change. And change is difficult. So um, I'm going to quit, before I get to the main point of my message, I'm just going to quickly mention some important things about writing, writing things down. Now, some of you did that last week. If you were here with Sean, you wrote down your goal for the year. Um, what I'm talking about writing is good for that goal or it might even be day-to-day -day activities. I have my to-do list. Writing is really good. So a lot of people know that it's a good idea but don't like the inconvenience of actually doing it so they don't do it. So I'm just gonna talk quickly about why it's a good idea. So first of all, the information sinks in. When you're writing it down, it sinks into your brain. Um, it also gives you something to reference to, especially if you're doing it the day-to-day -day checklist like me. It's like I can reference it. What did I do? What else do I have to do? Or your long-term goal. If you have a plan, you can see what you've done so far, how much you've grown, and how much more you have to go. Um, so for those of you who need a science behind the why you should be writing, I got these um, tidbits from an article in Forbes, and it was written by a neurosurgeon. So I found it interesting. Um, writing things down works on two levels, external storage and encoding. External storage is easy. It's placing your goal on a piece of paper, for example, where you can see it and you can post it in your bedroom or in your bathroom or in your car if you drive or even on the refrigerator. Um, it doesn't take a neuroscience to know that if you have a visual cue, it's easier to remember it. But there's another deeper phenomenon. I want to talk about and encoding. It's the biological process by which the things we perceive travel to our brain's hippocampus where they're analyzed. From there, decisions are, decisions are made about what gets stored in our long-term memory and what gets discarded. Kind of sounds like selective memory to me. It's like you analyze it and decide what you really want to keep in that long-term memory. So, Writing improves that encoding process. So in other words, when you write it down, you have a greater chance of remembering it. And that's what I want to talk about today, remembering. Remembering or not forgetting, they can be used interchangeably. And I want to stress this. Always remember to, or don't forget to, center God in your plan. No matter what your plans are, your long-term plans, your short-term plans, remember to center God in your plans. He will guide you in the right path. Proverbs 16.3 says, Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and he will establish your plans. He will establish them. 
Meaning that God will put the right plans in your heart. When you go to him and say, God, these are my plans, if it's your will, he will establish them. He will put them in your heart and he will let help you grow or he'll shut the door if it turns out it's not his will. Um, I've forgotten that step a lot to center God in my plans and it never turns out well. Trust me, you want to center God in any plan that you have. Um, remember. So now I'm going to start with a memory exercise. Who here or who out there remembers what a penny looks like? You all remember what a penny light looks like? Are you sure? Now is the time to take your paper and in detail, without taking a penny out of your pocket, in detail, I want you to draw the front and back of a penny. And I'm going to time you. I'm going to give you a minute and a half, unless you need less time. If you're finished before that, let me know. But I'm going to start with a minute and a half. So draw away a penny, beginning and the back. And we're going to see exactly who remembers what a penny looks like. So this out there in TV land, this is when I asked you to get your paper and pen. So draw it in detail, and I can't see you, so don't go pull out a penny and show it in detail. I did this with my husband last night, and I was like, okay, Monty. For those of you who know Monty, I'm like, what, what's on a penny? And I asked him to verbally tell me, and obviously he's older than anybody here. Um, he didn't remember. He's looked at pennies for a very long time. He didn't remember what was on the back. So, selective memory. It didn't get into his long-term memory yet. So, we're almost at a minute. Mimi's like, I don't know. What's on the back, right? And it's something you have been holding and using. Now, I get it nowadays. Less cash, more debit cards. But you have all seen pennies. When you were kids in elementary school, they probably taught you how to count change. At least I know when I taught kindergarten, first grade, I remember teaching kids how to count change. So you've all seen a penny. And you all said before that you know what a penny looks like. All right, so time is up. Now this is the thing. When I tell them to, Doug is going to show you the image front and back, and I want to know if anyone has it close. Go ahead, Doug. Let's see what the penny looks like. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I think, um, I don't know. It doesn't show where it happens. You have them facing the wrong way, George? Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. I have that building. Uh -huh. yeah, Do you have the building? Yeah. 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 Do you have a United States of America? Does anybody have In God We Trust? Yes. Yeah. I just wrote school. Um, yeah, I wrote a year. I love that you put In God You Trust. You put a year down? Yeah. Did, does anybody have the word liberty in there? No. Like I said, I wrote squiggly lines. Squiggly lines. You knew something was there. Yeah. yeah. Very good. I like it. So this exercise. Um, so here's a question for you. Is it possible to identify or recognize something stored in your brain without knowing details or remembering it accurately? Obviously, yes, right? Um, so now I'm going to show you, we're going to stay on the track of memory, long-term, short-term memory, and I'm going to show you a little clip that I think most of you have already seen. And those of you in TV land, listen. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm scared now. What? Stop following 
me, okay? What are you talking about? You're showing me which way the boat went. A boat? Hey, I've seen a boat that passed by not too long ago. It, it went, um, this way. Yeah, it went this way. Follow me. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What is going on? You already told me which way the boat was going. I did? Oh, no. If this is some kind of practical joke, it's not funny. And I know funny. I'm a clownfish. No, it's not. I know it's not. But I'm, I'm so sorry. See, I, I suffer from short-term memory loss. Short-term memory loss. I don't believe this. No, it's true. I forget things almost instantly. It runs in my family. Well, I mean, at least I think it does. Um, hmm. Where are they? <laughs> Dory. We all love Dory, right? Yeah. Do you? Do you? Do you? That's like one of my favorite parts of the movie. Um, so Dory has a problem. She has no short-term memory. She forgets what she's saying in mid-sentence sometimes. Um, again, out there, if you if I ask questions and you want to answer, just text me. Let me know. I'll share with the group. So, what would it be like if you were Dory? What challenges would you face by having no short-term memory? Can any Does anyone want to share anything about not having a short-term memory? Or, oh, Emily. What I'm doing. Like, if I'm doing a task and I, like, forget, I'm like, wait, why did I just eat that apple up? <laughs> <laughs> Very good, yeah. And I think that might happen to a lot of people. Like, just this morning, I walked into junior high to tell Sean something. Mimi was over there, and I'm like, why did I come in here? So, yeah, there's disadvantages. Fortunately, though, then I remembered, I retrieved it from my memory. Um, are there any advantages at all to having short-term memory? Can you think of an advantage? Well, I mean, if you're in like a traumatic situation, like a car crash or something, and you just forget it, then that would be better. Very good. Emily. Maybe if you're an artist, you get more creativity into your artwork. I like that. In case you guys didn't hear that, uh, Kimmy was saying that if you were in a car accident and it's traumatic or anything traumatic, it would be nice if you could forget that trauma. Um, and Emily shared that if you're an artist, um, you might be more creative. Like if you forgot you, what you were doing and then you had to think of something new, then it would add another level to that creativity. I like that. Um, does anyone want to share what a if you had no memory at all, what the scariest part would be of having no memory? Well, I saw this guy. He has um, Alzheimer's, and he can't remember what he's doing or who comes in to see him. And people come in to see him all the time. And the only thing he can remember is piano. So if we'll play piano while they're talking so that you can hear them. So I feel like that would probably be the scariest part, is not remembering your family or people who come to see you. Yeah, that would be very scary. I, I think of that because my dad had it, um, dementia and not knowing who your family is. So we just got a comment from Kevin Smith, Smitty. Um, he says, you don't beat yourself up over little things. That would be an advantage. Absolutely. Thank you, Kevin. Um, yes, how many of you beat yourself up when you do something? Yeah, I do too. It's terrible. Okay, so um, remember, it can be a powerful word. And just the mention of the word, sometimes you think, uh-oh, what did I forget? And someone says to you, did you remember? You're like, oh no, what did I forget? And you have to prepare yourself to um, trying to retrieve something or trying to remember something, depending on if that speaker has a, a period or a question mark after, the, after what they say. For example, if I say, Remember, your soccer practice is at five, not six, then you have to store it and remember that. Or if I say, do you remember that mean third grade teacher you had? What was her name? Now you're trying to retrieve it. So it depends if there's a period or a question mark. So there are so many different things you have to remember. People, places, algebra equations, problem strategies, just so much to remember. Um, and you have to do that to continue and move forward. Without these memories, you'd be wandering around, right? You wouldn't know who you are, where you are, what you were doing, or how to move forward. Memories 
not only give us all the information for basic needs like walking, talking, eating, how to get to youth room, you know, basic things. Um, they help us to know who we are. And God says a lot about remembering. God understands that. And he says a lot about remembering. We are, I'm going to read some verses from Deuteronomy. Um, just to show you an example of what God thought about remembering. So the first example, actually, is the explanation of the fourth commandment. I'm not going to read the fourth commandment, though. Deuteronomy 5.15 says, Remember that you were slaves in Egypt, and that the Lord your God brought you out of there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Now, use your memory. Who knows what the fourth commandment is? Because you've all heard it. You've all probably studied it at some point. Let's see if anybody out there remembers. Love your neighbor as yourself. Kimmy says love your neighbor as yourself. No, but good guess. <laughs> <laughs> all right, doesn't look like anybody's going to answer from home either. That's okay. Fourth commandment is honor the Sabbath day. God is saying remember. All right, Deuteronomy 6.12. Be careful that you do not forget the Lord who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. 8.18, but remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth and so confirms his covenant, which he swore to your forefathers as it is today. 7.18, you may say to yourself, these nations are stronger than we are. How can we drive them out? But do not be afraid of them. Remember well that the Lord your God, what the Lord your God did to Pharaoh and to all of Egypt. You saw with your own eyes the great trials, the miraculous signs and wonders, the mighty hand and outstretched arm with which the Lord your God brought you out. Remember powerful word he wants us to remember now especially those of you who went through confirmation I'm looking around I think that was all of you um, we talked about um, the Israelites wandering around and going into the promised land and Moses giving the Ten Commandments but do you remember these details do you remember God telling us to remember him or do not forget him remember we understand the need for a good memory. We talked a little bit about it. Just as the Israelites had a future ahead of them, it was new and unknown. They're about to go into the promised land. Um, it's kind of like us right now. We are all going into the new, we have been and still are going into the new and unknown. And not just COVID. I was talking to some eighth graders who were trying to decide what high school to go to. Um, high schoolers trying to decide what college to go to. College kids deciding what career to have or maybe where to live. The new and unknown journeys. You have to remember to center God in all of those plans. Now Exodus 3-7 is a guide and I love this. It's the importance of remembering God. So the Lord God said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. God is saying, remember, he sees. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drives. Remember, God hears. I have heard them crying out. Oh, I said that twice. <laughs> I, am I am concerned about their suffering. God loves us and cares when we're suffering. So I have come down, God is with us. Remember that. We just talked about that at the holidays. Emmanuel, God with us. To rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians, God is our savior, remember. And to bring them out of that land, God delivers us out of suffering. Remember that. Into a good and spacious land, a land of flowing with milk and honey, God provides. Very important to remember that. God provides us with things that we need to live richly. God meets our needs. Remember, he meets our needs, not our wants. Very important not to forget that. God wants us to remember who we are, 
where we come from, who he is, and he wants us to remember to have a relationship with him. It's very important. Have a relationship and center him in your goals. They give us a foundation to stand on. We talk about that a lot. 724 is the name of our youth group. A firm foundation. Build your house on a firm foundation. And when the storms come, it will not crumble. All those memories ground us in our lives. They give us that foundation. And that gives us the direction for our future. A future that is going to have more joy than if you didn't center God. <coughs> Bless you. More importantly, and what I learned the hard way, a future with less circumstances to suffer. Um, it's easy to get distracted by what the world tells you is important, right? Fame, money, greed. Um, their idea of success is much different than God's will. And But he is saying in that those verses I read, he is saying he will give you all that stuff. He's not saying you have to be poor, right? He's not saying you have to be homeless. He will give you all that stuff. He just wants you to center him in his life. This is very important to remember to keep our mindset not on the things of the world, but on God's will. Now, it's very human and very natural. You have a plan. Didn't go as expected. This has happened to me a lot. I have this great plan after college, I had this amazing plan of what I was going to do with my life, and nothing, none of it looks like I had planned, but that's okay. Um, God had a better plan. He really did. And I fought him for a while, and I hung on real tight for that control until I learned to give it up. This verse just helps me a lot when I'm feeling down because my plan didn't happen. It's Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. It's not just a verse. It is the truth. I've lived it. Um, I, I want you all to remember and not forget that. Now, um, just to sum it up, our series so far, the first week, Sean talked about... Um, what can we do for a new year? That is our series title. Make a plan, set goals, and I'm telling you to remember all these important things. Center God in your life. Pray with me. Dear God, sometimes it is very hard to remember all these things. I'm glad that your word is written down that we can reference. It's written down for us to remember, and hopefully we can, can use it and put it in our long-term memory. I pray that we all go out of here feeling stronger, knowing that you are behind us. I pray that anyone who is suffering with COVID heals quickly without any complications. And I just lift up all these kids as they are still um, trying to figure out school and how to do this online and know that eventually we will all be back together in a big group. I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so... I have a couple games, depending on, I don't know if we'll get through the first. And I know you all love this, so I'm going to make you do it. Crowd Charades. Crowd Charades 2020. So, for those of you who don't.